Good morning, ladies. So network marketing, is it just a numbers game? I hear this bandied around a lot where people say, you know, it is a numbers game. If you just bring enough people in, if you recruit enough, if you build, 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 eventually you're gonna find someone who has all of the ready-made skills, abilities, confidence, know-how to run with this and take you to the next level. And I'm here to tell you, I'm really sorry, but that is a really common misconception. Leaders are not found, leaders are built. Another common misconception of this business is that you can recruit other top level network marketing leaders from other companies into your business. Now again, this is from my experience, a big misconception. And in fact, one of the first books I read when I started my business was a book by Tom Bigal Schreiter called How to Build Network Marketing Leaders. And he lays it out really, really clearly in, in his book, Why Top Leaders Don't Jump Ship. Um, they can't be poached. If top leaders jump once, they will jump again. And if you look to build your team on other network marketing uh, producers, then what you're gonna end up with is a team of um, uncommitted people. Um, from my experience, that's certainly been true. And I'll tell you what, 100% of the leaders in my team had never done network marketing before. This was their first experience and I built them from scratch. So let's dig a little bit deeper. Are you doing all of the income producing activities yourself to build a team? So you are recruiting, you are building, you're bringing people into your team, but you're not seeing success. And you're looking at your team and you're blaming them for your lack of success. And you're thinking, well, I'm doing all of the things. I'm leading by example. If only I could find somebody just like me. <laughs> we hear this a lot. In fact, I've even said it before on my growth journey. Um, now, people who are born with all the skills, all of the abilities to run with this business um, and don't need any coaching, don't need any guidance, don't need any help and support, they are a mythical creature. And when I look back over my journey, I'm, I'm a BS1 presenter. I was not born ready. Every master starts a disaster is one of my favorite sayings, and I was certainly that. I leaned on my upline a lot when I first started. I was asking questions, basic questions about kudos and about color matching and, you know, all of the stuff that, you know, you'd think a ready-made leader would know. I went through that growth journey. I threw myself into self-development to grow the skills and the confidence needed to sell and to recruit. And then when my girls were joining, I was you know, teaching them to do the same. I was plugging them into those resources to help them grow and learn. And then when I hit leadership level, I read every single book going on leadership skills, on how to get the best out of people, on how to motivate and inspire, on how to get people doing things that they wouldn't normally do, on influence, on persuasion, on vulnerability. I learned everything I could on how to be a good leader. And guess what, when my, when my girls were getting to elite rank, when they were becoming leaders in their own right, I passed on this knowledge to them. I was recommending the same books to them so they could go on the same growth journey. None of us, none of my leaders, myself included, were born ready for this. We all started disasters and we had to grow and stretch into the role that we do now. So we're involved in the development of people. That's essentially what this business is. It's like I just said, it's bringing people in and coaching them to be the best possible version of themselves so that they can find their way with this business. So let's say you do manage to find somebody with all of the raw materials to do well in this business. Four things to look out for are um, character, coachability, the desire to do well and to succeed with this and the willingness to work. Let's say you do find somebody um, with all of these qualities. You introduce them to the business. They too will fizzle out and fade away if left to their own devices, unless they have somebody to work with who is passionate, who is driven, who believes in them and who is willing to guide them and point them in the right direction. Even if it's just when things go wrong, it's showing that vulnerable side saying, ah, oh, I went through that too, it's not just you, this is how I came out the other side. It's about having somebody to 
constantly remind them what works and what doesn't work and what we should be doing and what sh we shouldn't be doing. Those constant reminders to keep people on track are essential. So a lot of you are gonna be thinking, I just don't have that level of confidence as a leader yet to, to lead my team in this way. And what I would say to you ladies is try anyway because done is better than perfect. And what you're gonna find is if you just show up for your team and you build relationships with the team and you try to lead them to the best of your abilities, as you go along, you're gonna learn what works and what doesn't. And then partnering that with self-development to grow yourself, you're gonna figure it out as you go along. So I mentioned it's also important to work on yourself. It's also important to keep up with your own self-development. But there does come a time when you need to switch the focus from your own self-development to the development of other people. So the leaders in my team and myself, we have from the very first day in this business focused on building our confidence, on changing our outlook, on creating a success mindset, on learning the skills and the abilities to do well with this. We focused on that from day dot. Um, now imagine a team of people who are all working on those areas because the truth is if we're only working on ourselves there's only so far that we're going to be able to get there's only so much production that we can do on our own network marketing works when you have a team of people all on the same page working towards the same goals and growing themselves in the same way so the focus really needs to switch from your own personal development to the development of people uh, one of my favorite sayings when it comes to success is, my wealth can only grow to the extent I grow myself. But what if we switch that up for the network marketing profession and we said, my wealth can only grow to the extent that my team grows themselves. It's true, <laughs> it's so true because we do have strength in numbers. We can do so much more as a collective than we can on our own. So the development of people, super, super important. And you do play a key role in this as a leader. It's your job to facilitate that culture of self-development, that culture of people growing themselves. A lot of the times people will plug someone into the new starter group or they'll plug them into the training website. They'll give them the very basic training to get going with this business. And then after month one, they watch them and just say, right, we'll see, you know, we'll see how you go. Well, <laughs> they leave them to their own devices. And very quickly, people fizzle out, they fade out. People don't pick it up on their own. They don't figure it out on their own. Even now, my leaders come to me all the time for help and support and I'm there for them when needed. Um, it's, it's that simple reinforcement, sometimes that moral support that you can only get from a sponsor. So it all starts with us taking responsibility for our own self-development when it comes to leadership. So the books that I would recommend for leadership is anything by John C. Maxwell. So, um, the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, the Five Levels of Leadership, Leadership 101, um, there's a great book by Brian Carruthers called Building Your Empire. Big Al Schreiter, How to Build Network Marketing Leaders. It teaches you how to be a leader more than how to build other leaders. The Power of Vulnerability by Brené Brown and How to Win Friends and Influence People. So that book is amazing for building your communication skills, but I feel that it's also amazing at turning you into a leader because what is leadership other than influence? And then once you've taken responsibility for your own personal development, it's about taking responsibility for the personal development of others. And I'll tell you what, there is nothing in this business more rewarding than watching people grow. No amount of money, no amount of trips can compare to the feeling that you get when somebody messages you telling you that you have had a big impact in some way on their life and on their family, even if it's just by recommending books for them to read and just being there for them, you know, when times get hard, nothing can compare to that feeling. So a lot of the time people look at their team and they say, I, there's no one I can work with now. No one is working. Nobody seems to want this as much as I do. 
And what I'll say to that is don't judge people on what they are now. Judge them on what they have the ability to become. Because sometimes life can absolutely knock us sideways and that leadership quality can remain hidden. But with the help of self-development and with a good mentor, people can chip away at the blockages and the, the things standing in their way to reveal the leader in them. That's our job as leaders to help people do that. Um, but obviously we can't work with absolutely everybody. Um, so the four things, I'm gonna repeat them again, the four things to look out for in who you work with is coachability, character, willingness to work, and the desire to do really well with this. Now I also want to distinguish between a top leader and a top producer, because they are not the same thing. They are not mutually exclusive. Sometimes you can get a leader who is not a top producer. I'm one of them. I'm the first to admit that I am not a rock star seller. I don't sell thousands and thousands every single month. Um, but I am a good leader. I'm good at knowing how to bring the best out in people, how to inspire them, how to motivate them, how to create vision, how to help them see the bigger picture and help them through the hard times. That's where I'm good. But you can also get top producers who are not top leaders because they haven't learnt those skills yet. So if you're one of those people who's recruiting, 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 you're built bringing people into the business but you're not seeing success yet, then I would say you need to work on the leadership side by reading those books that I have just recommended. And you know, to switch the focus from your, your own results and being the best at everything you do to helping the ladies on your team bring out the best in them. So um, where do you gauge yourself as a leader? Um, there is something called a leadership lid. This is something that John Maxwell teaches. And if you gauge yourself as let's say a level five or a level six, then the people in your team are only gonna grow to a level four, five, or six. They will literally not grow past you. Sometimes that does happen, very, very rarely. You are setting the lid for the leadership level of your team. So the more you grow yourself, your team will come with you, the more they will grow. The other thing I wanna say about the leadership lid is that you are going to attract people to your business who are on the same leadership level as you. So if you see yourself as a three or four, then you know the people who join your team are going to be threes and fours so how do you get higher self-development working on your leadership abilities practicing your leadership abilities somebody of a leadership level seven or eight is going to look at your abilities as a leader and it's going to affect their judgment as to whether they partner with you so the quicker you can up your you know you can up your level as a leader the quicker your team are going to grow with you and the quicker you're going to recruit people of a higher leadership level. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, this, this video has gone on way longer than I wanted to, so I'm going to wrap it up there. I hope this has been helpful to people. If it has, please um, share with your teams and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye.